Hello everybody, I am super excited for this project because we're going to be building an Amazon price checker which will automatically email you anytime any product you want goes below a certain price. So you tell it what product you want, what price you want it to be below, and it will email you as soon as the price drops below that price point. That sounds amazing and it's actually really simple to set up and I'm going to show you how to do it starting now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project quicker. And if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. As always, I have Visual Studio Code open to a completely blank folder so we can get started from scratch, and we're going to be using Node to create a simple JavaScript application that we can run, so we can just set this up by typing in npm init and hitting enter, and if we just hit enter a bunch of times, it'll give us all the default values. And as you can see, we now have a package.json, which contains all the different dependencies for our project, but we haven't added any dependencies yet. So let's actually add the dependencies we're going to need. And for our application, what we need to do is first, we need to go to the Amazon website and find the price. So we need to do some form of web scraping. So we need a library for that. We also need to go and send out an email. So we need a library for handling an email. And then lastly, we just need a library to handle environment variables because our email service is going to have an API key that we need to send it. So to install those, we can type npm i, and the very first thing that we need to install is going to be called Nightmare. And Nightmare will essentially allow us to actually do the web scraping from Amazon.com. It'll actually go to Amazon.com and give us back all of the HTML, which we can parse and do what we want with. And the great thing about Nightmare is it actually works for websites that are rendered using front-end frameworks or JavaScript. And Amazon.com is one of those websites. It actually is rendered on the front-end, so we need to make sure we use Nightmare or some other parser that'll handle that situation. Next, we need to worry about our email, and we're going to be using SendGrid for our email. So we can say at SendGrid slash mail. And this is the library that SendGrid has that allows us to really easily send and receive emails. And all we're going to be worrying about is sending emails in this one. We can hit enter to install those. It'll take just a little bit of time to install these, and then they'll show up inside of our node modules folder, and I'll be back when that finishes. And that just finished downloading everything for us. Now we have one more library we need to install, and this is going to be called .env, and this just allows us to set up environment variables using a .env file. So let's create that now, .env, and inside of here is where we're going to put our API key that we get from SendGrid for sending our emails, but we're going to do that towards the end of the video because right now we actually need to set up and work on actually parsing the HTML from Amazon.com. So let's just really quickly create a file. We're just going to call this parser.js, and this is going to be the file that actually checks the price on Amazon and does all the parsing and emailing for us. And the very first thing we need to do is actually find out what element we want to get from the HTML on Amazon. So I just have a simple Amazon pricing listed over here for a one terabyte solid state drive. And we see right here, this is the element we want to get. We want to get this price. We need to figure out some way to select that price. And a really easy way to do that is to just right click, hit inspect. And from here, we're actually able to look at the exact HTML code from the page. And all we need to do is click this little tool up here, which allows us to select an element inside a page. And as you can see, when we hover over this, it is the actual element we want. This is the price. We click on it to select it. And then over here, you see we have this span with the ID of price block our price, and you see it has the string $169.99. We need to actually make sure we keep in mind this identifier because this is going to be the ID that actually gives us this piece of information when we set up and use Nightmare. So I'm just going to copy this over just so we have this inside of our application to work with. And I'll just paste it in a string at the top of our page for now. And now that we have that out of the way, let's just maximize this screen so we have our entire Visual Studio code to work with. And the very first thing we need to do is just set up a basic function for checking the price. And we're going to make this an async function because we're going to do some asynchronous code in here. So we can say async function. We just want to call it check price. And then inside of here, we're actually going to check the price of our element using Nightmare. So the first thing we need to do to get working with Nightmare is to actually require Nightmare. So let's go up here. We can just say const Nightmare is going to be equal to require. And we want to require Nightmare. And this is actually just returning to us a function. So we can just call that function by putting the extra parentheses at the end. And this is going to be our nightmare object. We can pass in configuration values here if we need to, but in our case, all the defaults are just fine. So now that we have that set up, 
we can just come in here and say nightmare.go to. And what this allows us to do is go to some URL. So if we go back to our Amazon example, we can copy over this URL. Let's just make sure we paste this in here so we have it to work with. And what we wanna do is we wanna remove all of the extra information after the path. As you can see, the final path is this BO7BN. Everything here afterwards is stuff we don't need. So let's actually just remove all of this. This is just tracking information that Amazon uses to keep track of everything. So we don't actually need that. We just need this single URL here, which we can just paste inside of here, remove that. So now what we're doing is we're telling Nightmare to go to this URL and actually download the information from the page. Once it's downloaded from the page, we can use what's called dot wait. And this dot wait command essentially allows us to wait until some element is rendered on the page. This is the part that allows Nightmare to work with something like React because React, what will happen is it'll get the HTML and the HTML is gonna be completely blank once the page loads, and then the JavaScript will run to actually render the HTML. So what we wanna do is we just wanna wait till our price block, our price is showing up. And if you remember right, that was an ID. So we just put in here a CSS selector. In our case, we're waiting for the element with the ID of this ID, price block, our price. And once that shows up, we know our page has loaded and the price we want is on the page. So we can actually run some code on the document in order to get this price. And to do that, we need to use what's called evaluate. So the evaluate takes just a single function. So there's a function inside of here. And this function allows you to essentially write JavaScript as if you were on the front end of that application. So we have access to the document, for example, we can just say document.getElementById and we can get an element with that price block, our price ID. So let's copy that in here. Now what we've done is we've gone to that URL, we've waited until our element is shown on the page, and then we're evaluating some code to say, give me the element with that ID. And we just wanna get the text inside of that. So we'll say inner text. So now what we're doing is we're actually getting the text from inside of that element on the HTML page on Amazon's website at this URL. And now that we know that that's all that we want to do, we can just use dot end. And this is actually going to end this segment of code right here. And it returns us a variable, which is what we evaluated right here. So we can just say, we want to get the price string is what we'll call our variable. And we need to make sure that we actually await nightmare because this is all asynchronous. So we need to make sure we put await here so that it's actually awaiting that code and then running everything over here. And I'm just gonna tidy this code up just a little bit so it's easier to read. We're just gonna move this all the way to the end here, just line everything up. There we go. And now that we have a price string, we can move on to actually parsing this string into a particular price. So we can just come down here and we can say we want a price number, which is going to be equal to our price string. And all we wanna do is replace the dollar sign because as you remember, there's a dollar sign inside of this string. So we just wanna replace the dollar sign with nothing. And then of course, make sure that we turn this into a number. So we'll say parse float of that. So now what we're doing is we're replacing the dollar sign so we have just a single number and then we're converting that string into a number and storing it in this price number variable. Now we can do our check for what price we want. Let's say for example, if we remember and go over here, exit out of this, we saw that the price was $169. Let's say we want to get notified when the price is below 200. So in this case, we would actually get notified. Let's go over to our code and we can say if the price number is less than 200, which is our number we want to get notified for, then we can just run some code. For now, we'll just console.log, it is cheap. Otherwise, if for example, it is not cheaper than that, we can just say another log and just say it is expensive. There we go. And now that's all the code that we actually need. Let's just come in here and make sure we run that function. So we'll just say check price. And if we save this, and run node parser.js. This is actually going to run the code inside of here, and it's going to either print out it is cheap or it is expensive. And it takes just a little bit of time because as you remember, Nightmare is actually going out, getting the URL, downloading all the data, waiting for this to render, evaluating it. It does a lot of stuff, so it takes a little bit of time. But as you can see, we get a message printed out saying it is cheap. But if we change this to 150, for example, and as you remember over here, the price is 169, we should get it saying that it is expensive because it's actually over the price that we want to pay. So if we just give it a couple seconds here, as you can see, it says it is expensive. So now what we've successfully done is we've parsed Amazon's pages to actually print out whether or not the price is below or above the price that we want to target. But something that we haven't done is this is very static. For example, this URL, we can never change. This price, we can never change. I'm guessing you're going to want to change these things in your application 
And to do that, we can actually use arguments. So for example, in here, we could pass the URL and we could pass the price. And that way we can actually determine what our URL is and what our price is every single time we run the function. All we need to actually do is go up here and every single node application has something called process.argv and this is the argument you pass in. And it's going to be an array. The very first argument is node, which is what we're calling. Second argument is the file we're calling. And then everything after that is going to be anything we pass in here. So for example, URL would be the third element in that array. So what we want to do is we want to slice that array and we just want to get everything after the second element and beyond. So number two would be the third element. So we're saying skip node, skip parser.js and give us anything afterwards, which in our case is going to be our URL and our price. And we can just set this here to our arguments. And then what we can do is we can get our URL by saying that that's going to be our first argument. So argument of zero. And let's just call these args, makes it a lot easier. And then we can come in here and we can get the minimum price. This is the price that something must be less than or equal to in order for us to want to purchase it. And it's the second thing that we're going to pass to our function down here. And now we can actually use this information in here. Instead of passing this string, we can just say go to URL. And instead of checking a static price, we can say min price. So now let's make sure we copy this URL just like this paste that in there. So we have our URL and our price of 150. Make sure our code is cleaned up. And now if we run this, we should get it saying that it is too expensive because it's going to go to this URL. It's going to realize the price is above 150 and it's going to console log here. And as you saw, it did that. And all we need to do is just change this to 200. Now we know our price is below 200. So we should get returned saying it is cheap because it's lower than the price we specified. And there you go. You can see that's working. And this is going to work with any Amazon URL and any price that you want to specify. And every time you run it, it's going to check the live numbers on Amazon's site and return to you whether or not it's above or below that price every single time. Now, in order to actually start sending emails, what we need to do is go to SendGrid's website and we just need to create an account and log in, which I have already done. And the great thing about SendGrid's website is that you can actually send a ton of emails every month completely for free as long as you stay under the threshold. I want to say it's either 500 or 5,000 emails a month, which if you're using this simple application, you're never going to surpass that free limit that they give you, which is absolutely great. And all you need to do in order to find your API key is you just need to go down to settings and you can see there's API keys right here. And what you want to do is you want to create an API key that has access to send mail and in our case, I've created this API key right here. Let's just create a brand new API key. We can say that we want it to have restricted access. And if we scroll down, you should see mail send. And all we want to do is be able to let them send mail. So we can just bring this over to here. And you can see now it has only access to send mail. And we can say create and view. Oh, well, let's make sure we give it a name. We'll just call it here, our Amazon price checker. And make sure we click create and view. And you can see it's going to print out our API key here. And this is something that you want to make sure that you keep secret. I'm going to be removing this API key after I'm done with this video, so you won't be able to use this one. But when you create your API key, it must be kept secret. Make sure you don't commit it to any GitHub repositories or send it out inside the public anywhere where people could access this. So now that we have that copied, let's go back over into our code. And in our environment variable, we can create a variable, which we wanted to call sendgrid API key. And we can set that equal to the API key that we just copied, which we can see is here. Now with that out of the way, we can go back to our parser and we can actually import that environment variable. And that's what that .env library is for. We can just say require .env. And we want to say .config. Just like this, make sure we put this inside of quotes. There we go. And what this does is it actually loads all of our environment variables into the process.env variable. So we can say stripe, I'm sorry, not stripe, send grid API, whoops, key, just like that. And that's going to be our environment variable that we set in our .env file here. And what we want to do is we want to actually set up and hook up that library we imported earlier, which is send grid. So we can say create a variable called send grid mail, sg mail, and we're going to set that equal to require. And we want to require at send grid slash mail, just like this. Now from here, all we need to do is call sendgridmail.set API key, and we want to pass it this API key. And what this is going to do is it's going to set our API key for all of the requests that we make to this application. Now we can create a function which will actually send our email. So let's say function send email, and we want to send an email with a subject. 
and we want to have some form of body to our email. Now what we need to do to create an email is to create an object, we'll just call it email here, and this object is going to have all of our important email fields. For example, we're going to have a to field, and in our case, what I've done is I've just gone to some fake URL, fake email site, it's called tempemail.org, and it'll just give you a temporary email you can use for testing purposes. I'm just going to copy this down, paste it in here so we can actually see the emails show up inside of this inbox when we actually send them. Next, we need to set a from field. You can just set this to whatever you want. I'm going to call it Amazon price checker at example.com. This doesn't really matter from the from field. You can just do whatever you want. You can use your own email, whatever email you want. Next, our subject. Obviously, we're getting this passed in. So we'll just say subject and text. We're going to put to our body. And then we also have HTML, which we're going to set to our body. And the way email works is you can have both an HTML email and a text email. And in our case, they're both going to be exactly the same. So we're just going to send both of them as exactly the same information for body on both of them. And now all we need to do is send that email. So we can just come down here. We can return, whoops, return sendgridmail.send. And we want to pass it that email object. And the reason we're returning this is because this actually returns a promise. It's asynchronous. So we need to make sure that we await that inside of our code. Now up here, what we can do is we can actually call that send email function. And we want to first pass it a subject, which we can say price is low. And then we want to pass it some kind of message. And I'm actually going to pass it a really useful message that will allow you to view the website from the email. So instead of some string interpolation, we can say the price on, and then we can pass it the URL, has dropped below our price. So essentially what this is saying is that the price on whatever URL has dropped below the given price that we specified. And in our case, this is actually min price, just like that. And we can remove our console.log. And we also don't really need an else statement because we don't want to send an email if the price is not below what we want. We only want to be notified when the price is actually lower than it should be. So let's just remove this, save it, and actually test to make sure this works. As we know, our price is below 200. So when we run this, we should hopefully see an email show up over here telling us the price is low, and it should give us the link to the URL as well as the price that it is lower than. So let's make sure that works. We can see our application ran. And if we come over here, click refresh, you can see that we got an email showing up in our inbox. And this email has both the link that we want, as well as saying that the price has dropped below $200. Now, one thing that could happen with our application is it could throw some kind of error inside of here. And if this is just running in a background job somewhere, we're not going to actually notice when this error occurs. So we want to actually send an email to ourselves every time an error occurs. And this is easier than it sounds. All we need to do is make sure we wrap all of our code inside of a try catch. So let's copy all the code that we have currently and put it inside the try portion. Just want to make sure that we fix the indentation of everything. Oops. And that's all lined up there. Indent all this. Okay, there we go. So now all of our code is in a try, which means that if our code ever fails, it's going to go into this catch section. And in the catch, what we can do is we can actually send ourselves an email. So we can say send email and we can say Amazon price checker error. And we want to send the message of that error as the body subject. And then lastly, just to make sure that we actually get some good logs for what our error is, we want to make sure we throw that error again. This just means if we go and check the logs for our application when it's running, we'll actually see the error show up here. And what I'm going to do to demonstrate this is I'm going to purposely throw an error. I'm just going to put some bogus code in here. This is going to throw an error on us. So if we run this, we should get an error right here. As you can see, it printed out our error right here since we threw that error. And if we go back to our email, make sure we click refresh, we should see another email in here saying that we had an error. And as you can see right here, if we view this email. It says that we had an error and it told us the message, which is that that random Ghibli Joss that I typed out is not defined, which is correct. The last important thing that we need to make sure we do is just that we actually await the sending of our email just like this. So that way nothing wonky goes wrong and that our code exits before our email is actually sent. We just make sure that our email is always going to be sent for us. And that's all there is to web scraping, sending emails, and checking Amazon prices. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.